Okay. Okay. So this is a workshop tent where the kids are going to learn to make a guide hat. And you'll see that there are many people in period costumes. Uh, they are part of the reenactment. Some are professional. Some are just volunteer. And this is what they do. They travel around and go to reenactments. Uh, and then those of us that are just visiting are called moderns. The best thing to do if you traditionally they would leave canoes here on the lake shore over the winter, they would fill the canoe with rocks and sink it in the spirit. Oh, to keep wow. the bird bark hydrated. Wow. But yeah, those two canoes behind you were built by our staff. The one on the saw horses was built last year. The one on the floor was 2016. So we go out and harvest the birch bark and the spruce roots ourselves, and we find a big white sear to cut down and make all of our ribs. So you're actually doing this? You're learning how to build these? Or you know how to build these? So these, these are every two years. So we are not doing one this year. Oh, wow. But we will make another one next year should I come back. So even though this is called a rendezvous, a rendezvous, this is actually a living history event. And so everything that they do is according to the time period, which would have been in the late 1700s. So they are playing a game of lacrosse. And I do not see any moderns out there, so it must be a game of lacrosse only for the reenactors. In the very back, you can see there's a blacksmith. And this fort was actually built, it is not a military fort. It was not built um, to keep Native Americans out. It was built to protect the, um, the goods that were brought here from thieves. So it was, um, it was a welcoming place for the fur traders and the Native Americans alike. Hey, it's gonna be like, we could do it two different ways. We can make it into a over two, we can make it into an overlap stitch or an overlap seam, like a like a sea bag seam, or we can butt it. Can you wax it? No. So if you roll them together, butt it, sew it up, it's done. Simple. Oh, Look at that too. Yeah. You you made that. We have been told the temperature is about 46 degrees. I don't foresee them getting in.
cold. Okay. <laughs> Going for a hike down. Except for it's my kind of hike. <laughs> the Grand Portage. Portage. Halo's got her big portage pack on. Mm -hmm. Mom, it says no motor vehicles. You can ride a bike. I wonder if they allow cheetahs. <sighs> I don't allow cheetahs on my YouTube channel. Grand Portage. Hello! Bonjour! Bonjour! And they, they trade with the Native Americans for furs. Now in order to do that though, they've got to paddle these big boats filled with trade goods. This boat right here is 26 feet long. It carries 4,000 pounds of trade goods wow. and people. 26 feet long, 4,000 pounds. That's the size of your parents' minivan inside a canoe. <coughs> so you're gonna paddle a canoe 14 hours a day. And then at the end of that 14 hours, you think you're gonna go inside uh, your house and uh, nope. sit back on the Lazy Bill recliner and pop a pizza in the microwave and nope. open a Coke? What do you think you're going to do next? Do it again. So you got to load that whole boat onto shore, bring the boat up on shore, tip it upside down like that over there, and see there's a piece of canvas over the tide, the top, that's going to make a shelter. And then the rest of the night you're going to be cooking, you're going to be making canoe paddles, you're going to be making moccasins, and then you sleep real fast, you get up the next morning before daylight, and you start the whole thing all over. Sound like fun? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I've got some tough people here. All right. The guy in the funny hat over there, he's our guide. He's our guide. And you can tell by the funny hat that he's our guide. And and see this next guy in the red tube right here? He's going to be our, our, our gouvernail right now. Hey, Rick's the Avant. So the Avant, Avant's the guy that sits on front. Avant means advance. He's the guy in the front of the canoe. The gouvernail is going to sit in the back of the boat. You guys, because you're all new to the company, you're the Mule. Mule, you go. They're, they're the engine of the boat. You guys are the strength. You're going to paddle in all these center sections. But the game is is to do it all in, in sequence with that guy in the front. Two. Stroke. 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 So are you uh, are you uh, bare Stroke. left? Moose right. Stroke. Okay, Liam. Watch watch the guy in the front. You're gonna take you do exactly what he's doing. Got that? Already you guys are doing better than the people we had out there yesterday. Here are those bales and boxes. They're they're just way too heavy. If I carry my arms, I'm not gonna last very long. So the idea is to get that off our arms and put it on our back because it's much stronger. So we use a thing called a tump line. It's just a, a, a strap that we can put the uh, hold the bales on your back. So what I want you to do is, is face all your new friends here and bring your feet in a little bit closer so about a shoulder width apart. Bend just a little bit the waist, but keep your chin up. 
if you let, so bend a little bit at the waist, but keep your, no, 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 keep your knees straight, just bend forward at the waist, and keep your chin up. Up, 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 there you go. Yeah, it's about what you need. See, there's a big semi-trailer back here. Caleb <laughs> can carry 90 pound bales all day long, right? See, Caleb's got big, strong shoulders. He's got strong arms. He's got that dim look in his eyes. He says, I can carry weight all day long and never complain, right, Caleb? <laughs> all right. All right, Caleb. So here you go, Caleb. I'm going to put this on your forehead. And now I want you to put your left hand on your forehead to hold that in place. Woohoo! First one today that put the left hand up there. Remember, you have to keep your forehead, your chin up. Yeah. See what happens, Caleb? If you you put your chin down, the strap's going to come down on your front of your face and on your neck. There we go. So keep your chin up, Caleb. Got to keep your chin up. Remember, I don't want to have to write any letters to your parents. Now I want you to grab this rope with your right hand and pull it tight to your chest. Now, if you keep your left your your chin up, you can let go with your left hand without getting strangled. You can let go of there. Grab here, let me pull this through. Grab that left rope. Keep one rope in each hand. Okay? Up against your chest, nice and tight. Alright, Caleb, how you feeling, bud? Good. See now Caleb's getting paid by the number of bales he carries. Is Caleb going to carry just one bale? No! No! no. no. Keep your chin up, okay? Oh, good chin. <laughs> two. Hey, these people don't like you, Caleb. They want you to carry two. Oh. Here goes, wow. here goes Caleb. A beast. A Spanish dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now remember, he's getting paid by the number of bales he carries. Caleb's not going to just walk from the first river over to the second one and walk back. Caleb's going to jog from oh. the one river to the second river. He's going to put those up. bales on. He's going to run back. He's going to pick up two more bales. He's going to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth all day long until he carries 3,000 pounds of goods from one river to the next. Are we going to give Caleb a break? No. No? no. no. Caleb, what did Maybe you do to these people? Moment. Nobody likes you. <laughs> so, Caleb, you ready to get this off your back? Okay, hold on tight because we don't want to strangle you. Even though Mom and Dad are here. <laughs> all right, Caleb. Let me get this off your back. Good job, Caleb. Well, our weekend is coming to a close. I don't know if you can hear in the background, um, powwow has started back up at the powwow grounds. And this has been a pretty cool experience. I'm going to pause here. I'm getting ready to pass some people and I feel weird filming as I'm walking. So uh, give me just a second. I'll be back. Well, it won't be anything but a point of time for you, but <laughs> it'll be a couple seconds for me. So I don't know if I've adequately explained... Uh, what the like geography is here so just up the hill is the powwow grounds and this is all tribal land it's reservation uh, it's Grand Portage um, band of the Chippewa or Ojibwe um, Native Americans and so it's just a short walk down here to the um, Grand Portage National Monument and at the monument they do a reenactment of the Grand Portage Rendezvous. Um, it was a time where the uh, voyagers would come from Montreal. They would paddle their canoes to Grand Portage and they, when they got to here, they had to portage around a series of rapids. I think there's like 21 waterfalls and rapids that they have to portage around. It's a total of 8.6 miles. And so they would get off here and begin their portage. Uh, which, for those of you who do not know, a portage is where you carry um, your canoe from one water point to another across land. And so that's what this is. And they, um, the voyagers and the fur traders would convene here and they'd have this great big party for a couple of days is basically what it is. And so this is reenacting that. And it was... Um, pretty neat and unique because I, I know I mentioned that this fort is not a military fort. It was very open to um, Native Americans and voyagers alike because they did life together. And so this celebrates that time period and it still goes on today, which I think is super cool. Um, the other day as I was walking down here, um, I got here and there was a moment where the drums stopped. I couldn't hear those any longer. And um, some bagpipes picked up. And that was pretty neat because I had just gotten between basically the two worlds. Uh, and so this has been a really neat experience getting to 
uh, see firsthand um, the cultures. I don't know, it's a little bit surreal. Today is the last day of the rendezvous. And so a lot of the reenactors are packing up to head home. And that's a little sad. Uh, we've really enjoyed getting to know the people and uh, learning about what they do. I wanted to stop our video here. We're getting ready to go uh, into the Boundary Waters, so we're excited about that. And that's where I will pick up with my next one. So thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you uh, from Ely, Minnesota.